I see a lot of comments on YouTube and Facebook saying that you aren't a real machinist if you can't do this, or you aren't a real machinist if you can't do that. Well, I would say that you aren't a real machinist if you don't have mad smack talking skills. This is craftsmanship that Jesse and Trevor will never be able to achieve. Oh, there's a very signature chatter pattern that he loves so much. <laughs> Phenomenon that's caused by the... Trevor Crybaby. We were running it like Trevor. <laughs> Now I'm gonna tell you a story about something incredibly stupid and careless that I did, and it's something that Titan and most shops, period, would never approve of, and I'm lucky no one died or got fired, but hey, it happened, so let me tell you about it. A long time ago, back when I was still a teenager, I was working at a machine shop with a friend of mine. We had a laser cutting machine at our disposal, so me and my buddy made a bunch of knives and throwing stars, and we set up a nice cardboard target complete with bullseye on a workbench. As we were swapping parts out of our machines, we would take turns throwing various sharp objects objects at the target. After swapping a part, I grabbed an 8 inch hunting knife off my table and threw it as hard as I could at the target. Of course, the entire knife flew straight through the cardboard. I heard, aha! And my buddy came out from behind the target where he had been picking up the knives and other stuff that had fallen on the floor. As the knife flew through the target, the handle of the knife had hit him directly in the forehead and he had a trickle of blood running down his face. Now had it been the blade that hit him, he would have been a dead man. But since he wasn't dead, and after a minute he was smiling so I knew he wasn't hurt too bad, I told him, well, what doesn't kill you disappoints me. And he countered by saying, I know you were just trying to kill me so you could finally be the best machinist in the shop. And we laughed and laughed. This made his head feel better and relieved the anxiety I had from nearly killing my friend. <laughs> Laughter really is the best medicine. Take Trevor, Jesse, Chris, Donnie, and Travis, for example. I work with these guys every day and I consider each one of them to be a friend. I respect their skills and talent, and we are all willing to drop everything to lend each other a hand. It doesn't matter if someone needs help with a program or machine, needs help moving, whatever. We have each other's backs 100%. But at the same time, Trevor's forehead is so big, he dreams in IMAX. I mean, his head is so big, he has to grease his sideburns in the morning to fit through the garage door. Chris is so short, he can't go into the deep end of the bathtub without his floaties on. That's kind of small. He's so short, he can sweep under his bed while standing up and thinks that dragging rocks on metal makes him a machinist. Jesse's machining skills are as disappointing as plant-based steak and his programs are as useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. Every time I see him in a thumbnail, I automatically click it because I fully expect a tutorial on how to properly boil crawfish. Every time Travis comes to my desk, I reflexively pull out my license and registration. And Donnie has some good stories, but I just want to get to the chapter where he shuts up. And these guys regularly inform me that I would make a great Walmart greeter and that I'll go really far in my career one day and they hope I stay there. And why do we say things like that? Simple. Because it's funny. Working as a machinist, you end up spending more time with your coworkers than you do with your own family. And that means that you end up working alongside people that you consider friends, sometimes for decades. Now, if you decide to step into the world of machining and you're coming out of a sheltered environment like school or a different industry, you better be prepared for a totally different culture. If you step into a shop and you hear your new coworkers berating each other, you might think that it's a hostile work environment, but it may actually be the complete opposite. Work is work, but if you have friends that you can laugh with all day, it starts to feel a lot less like work and a lot more like a sport. Looking at the history of smack talk, people have done this for thousands of years. Just before a battle, you tell the guy next to you how pretty his girlfriend is, and it'll light a fire. Same thing in the shop. You come in, grab your coffee, you're getting ready for battle, and you smack talk everybody as the day starts so that everyone hits the floor laughing and ready to knock out some work. Now, not everyone participates in this, so these types of bonds need to develop over time and sometimes not at all. Don't just start making your mama jokes on your first day at work. But with any luck, you'll end up working with a team that has a good enough synergy to be able to laugh at yourselves. There's a lot of really dumb people in this world, and I would like to thank all of you in the comments for helping me to understand this better. Ah, just kidding, just kidding. Well, for some of you. Thanks for listening to today's story. Please like and subscribe and hit that join button to become a member. There are different levels from one to three with awesome perks like badges, free merch, access to our Discord server. You can come there, hang out with us, chat with Titan, me, Jesse, all the guys. And I want to give a special shout out to one of our level three members, Bobby Stotter. Thank you so much for your support and becoming a partner with us in changing the industry. See you guys soon. Peace.
And don't think I forgot about you either, Tyson, with your weird boba teas and your anime. Have you ever noticed that you sneeze every 30 seconds when I'm in this building? I think it's because you're allergic to good content. Pretty mild compared to everyone else, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I like Tyson, what can I say?